Hello, welcome to lesson number 47. In our previous lesson, that is number 46, we were looking at the population estimation methods whereby we were able to look at the all, four, all the four methods which included uh, the capture recapture method and the quadrat method. This being the 47th lesson, we are going to look at adaptation of plants to various habitats. When I talk of adaptations in this case, I'm referring to changes that occur in a plant in order to enable it uh, to increase its chances for survival in a specific habitat. There are uh, various types of habitats into which plants may be growing and based on the hardships that uh, they may be facing in those habitats wherever they are growing, there are some adaptive features that they may be having to enable them survive there much better. For example, when I talk of those plants which grow in deserts and some grow in water, the challenges that they are facing are varying from one to the other and therefore they may be having some adaptations to enable them survive in such environments with uh, some uh, hardships which are differing from one another. The plants are therefore categorized into four basing on the habitat uh, uh, where they, uh, which they have been habited. And that brings us to these uh, four types of plants, namely the xerophytes, that is the first one. We have the hydrophytes, that is number two. And we also have mesophyte and finally halophytes. Xerophytes are refer to those plants that grow in dry areas with no or a small amount of water. They may also be referred to as the drought endurers. In areas where the xerophytes grow, the characteristics may include poorly distributed rainfall throughout the year. The rainfall pattern may also be unpredictable because the uh, no one can, uh, can tell whether rain will be falling in a given period of the year or not. The temperature is very high in this xerophytic environment. The environment is also windy and there is low humidity. The biggest challenge that these uh, plants, uh, the xerophytic plants are facing is lack of enough water in their tissues and even in the outside environment. Therefore, they really need to utilize the amount that is present maximally so that even if there is a short shower of rain within a certain period, they can, uh, they can absorb it maximally so that there is no wastage of water at all. Let us look at the adaptations that these uh, plants have that enable them to survive in this kind of environment. Adaptation number one, they have well-developed roots to enable them absorb water deeply in the soil. That is adaptation number one. Number two, mm -hmm, my number two is here. They have thick, waxy cuticle to reduce the rate of transpiration, remember? These plants that are growing in the deserts or uh, in semi-arid areas are actually lacking uh, enough water in their external environment and therefore when there is even a short shower of rain they really need to absorb the water maximally hence making them to have deeply penetrating roots. These roots which are deeply penetrating also enable them to absorb water which are deeply located in the water table. Adaptation number three, I hope you're able to see this one over here, they have succulent leaves and stems. The succulent leaves and stems enable them to store water in their tissues. That suggests that they have some tissues which are known as the parenchyma tissues. 
Number four, they have needle-like leaves. The needle-like leaves enable them to reduce the rate of transpiration. Remember always that the broader, uh, the broader the leaf surface, the higher the rate of transpiration. That is, a, a white surface area has been exposed to the sunlight and therefore when the sunlight hits that leaf surface, then the water comes out of the plant to cool the leaf surface which has been heated by the sunlight. And therefore, these leaves can avoid such kind of cuticular transpiration which take place through the leaves by having uh, the small and needle-like leaves. They are also said to be the shidas, the shidas plants, that is uh, characteristic number five. I hope you are able to see it from my list. The deshidas plants are the ones that have, uh, that are capable of shedding their leaves during a dry season. These plants that are found in deserts are able to shed their leaves so as to reduce the rate of transpiration. They also have folded leaves in order to uh, reduce the rate of transpiration. When a leaf has been folded, then the surface that is exposed to the external environment is reduced and that reduces the rate at which it will be losing water into the atmosphere. Always remember, we defined the term uh, transpiration as the process whereby plant loses water in form of vapor into the atmosphere. Let's go to number seven. The seventh adaptation is they have reduced stomata, reduced number of stomata for that matter. The number of stomata is so small so as to reduce the rate of transpiration. Remember, these plants lose water through the uh, stomatal pores. When we have uh, the few uh, stomatal pores in a plant, then the rate at which uh, the process of transpiration will be taking place will actually be reduced as well. We also have, uh, we, they also have sunken stomata. We say a stomata is sunken with, when it is deeply located in the leaf. The sunken stomata provide them with something called substomatal space. Those are the spaces which are between the innermost side of the leaf and the outside part of the leaf. Those substomatal spaces allow accumulation of air within, uh, within, uh, within the leaf. And when there is accumulation of the air, remember air is a poor conductor of heat, and uh, therefore it may prevent uh, much heat from getting into the inner part of the leaf hence reducing the rate at which a transpiration is going to take place. Let's go to number nine. These leaves have reversed stomatal rhythm. That is number nine. Reversed stomatal rhythm is whereby the stomata is uh, closed during the day and during the night it is open, remember? As usual, the stomata is always closed during the night, while during the day, the stomata is open. When the, uh, the stomata opens during the day, the rate of transpiration is high, and that is why we have the reverse stomatal rhythm for these uh, plants that we call the xerophytes, because during the day, the temperature is so high in the, envi in the external environment of the plant, and therefore, these uh, stomata is closed during the day so as to reduce the rate at which transpiration will take place. During the night, the temperature is so, uh, so low in arid and semi-arid areas and therefore the plant may, uh, the, may have its stomata opened and the rate of transpiration is reduced. The last one, according to my list, they have a short lifespan to increase their survival chances. These plants uh, have a higher survival chance because of the short lifespan in sense that there are some instances whereby the plant may survive as a seed at some stages. 
so as to avoid uh, so as to avoid uh, being exposed to the external temperature which is always very high and that also increases uh, its survival chance the last one they have thorns on their leaves to prevent the browsers from grazing on them browsers are the uh, uh, herbivores which feed on the leaves of plants such as the giraffe they cannot be able to feed on uh, most of the xerophytic plants because they have the uh, thorns on their surfaces and they may also be having some hairy structures on their surfaces so as to trap moisture and reduce the rate of transpiration that is the end of lesson number 47 thank you for watching the video please remember to subscribe